Welcome back, IBAASL2. Um, today we're going to get dip into 5.5, but just the first part of it, um, applying calculus. Another word for this, like when uh, math teachers sit down and talk about the learning targets and stuff, uh, this unit is also called optimization. So you might hear us say, uh, we're going to do some optimization problems on uh, next class or something like that. I don't know what that accent was or what I was doing. But yeah, optimization is what it's also called. Uh, we're going to start with the classic folding box problem. So if you've never seen this before, it starts with a rectangular sheet of paper or sometimes it's metal depending on uh, how they reword the problem. But then you're going to cut these corners out of it. So you're going to cut a corner out of all four corners. And the corners uh, we are going to call X by X. So um, once you cut those orange corners out, you're get, then going to fold up the sides along these dotted lines. And then when you fold it, it will look like this diagram right here. So um, depending on how big you cut those corners, it will change the volume of the box. Uh, this question is essentially how big should we cut the corners so that the volume of the box is maximized. Um, and when I've done this problem in earlier classes, you know, we try different x values to show that it is indeed changing with different x values. Like, not every x value will give you the same uh, volume of the folded up box. So there has to be some certain x value that gives you the biggest volumized box you can. So here we go. Um, if we're going to cut x's out of the corners, that means that of this side of 24 centimeters right here, if you take an x out of it and an x out of it, that means that this side right here will be 24 take away 2x. Very similarly, you can do that to the side of 15 and say this side will be 15 minus 2x. If I translate those over to our diagram over here, that means the long side is going to be 24, take away 2x, and then the shorter side will be 15 minus 2x. Then the last thing you kind of have to picture is that if you're folding up these corners, like when you fold that, like this side will line up with this side because this part will be gone and then it will fold up meaning that the height of this box is x. Now, to find the volume of a rectangular solid like that, uh, you need to multiply uh, length times width times height. So, volume equals length times width times height. Don't say height. Height is not a word. I got busted on that years ago by a student. So for the volume of this box, uh, we are going to get x times 24 minus 2x times 15 minus 2x. Now, before we get to any sort of calculus, let's just clean this guy up a little bit by distributing everything. Well, actually, I am sort of getting to the calc part because I want to take a derivative of this, but I can't take the derivative right now when it's in this form. So I got to get it into a form that's friendly for the power rule. So um, first, we're going to foil these two. So we'll let that x just chill out front. Um, when you foil those insides there, you will get 360 minus 78x plus 4x squared. Then you have to distribute that x to all three of those terms in the second parentheses. So the volume is equal to 360x minus 78x squared plus 4x cubed. Now, this volume equation um, is like you choose an x value and feed it into it and then, you know, crunch that out and then it will tell you the volume of the box. If we want to maximize the volume of the box, um, maximums happen at like a local max of the equation. So, based off our derivative knowledge, if we take the derivative and set it equal to zero, that's where we can find local maximums and local minimums. So let's do it. Let's find the derivative. 
going to switch colors just for fun. Just for funsies. V prime is 360 minus uh, 156 x squared. No, nope, not x squared, Jolly. Come on, keep it together. Uh, the x squared goes down a power. Plus 12x squared. Now, that's the derivative. Uh, if you set the derivative equal to 0, you will find your turning points, a.k.a. stationary points, a.k.a. horizontal tangents, a.k.a. where the derivative is equal to 0. That was too many AKAs, I'm sorry. Um, you guys, trying to factor this, uh, you could bust out some crazy smoke and mirror method, or you could observe that all of those are divisible by 12. So if you divide both sides of this equation by 12, you get 0 is equal to uh, 360 divided by 12 is 30. So this would be 30. Take away 13x plus x squared. <coughs> Now, you can simple factor this. I guess you could rewrite it in the friendlier form of x squared minus 13x plus 30. Um, two numbers that multiply to positive 30 and add to negative 13 are x, or negative 10 and negative 3, which means we get x is equal to 10 and 3. Now, when we think about the original problem, um, if we just got x is equal to 10 and x is equal to 3 from both of those, um, picture like this x right here being 10 and this x being 10. So if I put 10 on this side and 10 on this side, do you see how those two things add up to more than 15? That means in context of the problem, um, my x values have to be you know, 15 halves or under, 7.5 or under. So this x value of 10 doesn't make sense in the context of the problem. So we can ch 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 cross that out and just say it's only, whoops, x equals 3 because 10 is unrealistic. Is that, it's outside the domain of the problem. Now, just in terms of calculus, if we took a derivative, set it equal to zero, found this point right here, um, we don't know whether or not this is a minimum or a maximum. We know it's one of them, but we're not sure which. To be able to tell whether or not it's a minimum or a maximum, we can find the second derivative. Second derivative is going to be, well, it'll be, you know, 360 just goes away, and then the coefficient of x, so we're taking the derivative of the derivative, it's negative 156, and then plus uh, the 2 comes out, multiplies with the 12, and we get 24x. Now, we can feed our value into the second derivative. So negative 156 plus 24 times... 3, and then 3 times 24 is 72, and you take away 156, and you get negative 84. So this is negative, which means that it's concave down. Which means it is indeed a local maximum. So x equals 3 produces maximum volume. Remember that if that second derivative had been positive right here, that would mean that you actually found a local minimum. Um, should we find the volume? Sure, sounds fun. Um, if you want to find the volume of you know, what the actual maximum volume is. We have to go back to our original equation, which is right here. So that's 360 times 3 minus 78, 3 squared plus 4 times 3 to the third. Let's see, did I plug it in? Yeah, 486 centimeters cubed. Hmm. 
Next problem, um, there's a fishing pole company. Uh, this is their cost, that it costs them 7x plus 3 uh, for every x being like a batch of 1,000 fishing poles. And then when they sell them, they're going to make this much money in revenue. Now remember that revenue is, uh, you know, it's, it's not profit. It's just the money that they will make from selling the poles. They still have to uh, subtract out their costs to be able to figure out the profit. So um, I forgot to write part of the problem. Part of the problem says uh, they can't make more than 1,200 poles in a day. So there's kind of a domain restriction is how you should think of it. Uh, workers can't make more than 1,200 poles in a day. So, um, if X is batches of 1,000 poles, uh, that means that the workers, the domain, uh, the workers can make zero pole, poles, doesn't make much sense, but they could make zero poles, uh, that the X has to be between zero and 1.2. 1. 1.2 1. 2 is uh, 1,200 poles in terms of uh, thousands, because X is in thousands of poles. So the question we're going to answer here, uh, how many poles... Should they make to maximize profit? So when you think about this, like um, there's this cost for them to make poles. It's seven x plus three, but then they get money for their, those poles of x cubed plus ten x squared plus twenty x. Um, so if they make just one pole, it's not going to cost them much, but it's, you know, going to create uh, not that much revenue. Um, there's this magic number that's somewhere in between. Like if you make, you know, millions of poles, it's not going to necessarily mean more and more profit because this is a cubic right here. So in general, um, profit is equal to revenue minus cost. We have um, equations for both of those. So for our profit, P of X, uh, revenue is X cubed minus 10 X squared plus 20 X. But then we're going to subtract out the cost, which is 7 X plus 3. Let's do just a little cleanup on that. There's not much we can do, but we can distribute the negative, combine like terms. So the 20x and the negative 7x give us 13x minus 3. So this is the profit equation. We want to know when this is maximized. We want to maximize profits. So uh, once again, to find maximums and minimums, you can take the derivative and set it equal to 0. Let's go a different color. I like when I switch it up. Now we need to set that equal to zero and figure out what X values are gonna be like the turning points, AKA maximums and minimums. Oh boy, uh, three and 13 multiplied together are like uh, 39. And then we might need to find two numbers that multiply to negative 20. So what's that, 13 and three? No, wait, what? Is this factorable? Did I do it right, you guys? Do I have to erase this whole freaking video? 3x squared minus 20x plus 13. Oh my gosh, you guys. We have to... <laughs> it says use, use your GDC to solve this. Um, you guys, I tried to factor it because they've all been factorable up to this point, but this is unfactorable. There's not two numbers that will work nicely for that. So in this case... Um, I mean, yeah, if you have your graphing calculator, you can graph that and find the x-intercepts. Or the more tra tradish way to do it would be 
quadratic formula or complete the square. Both of them would work fine. Um, but the book does resort to decimals at this point. So when you solve that, uh, you will get x is about 0 0.73 and... Uh, 5.94. Now, remember those are thousands of fishing poles that we just found. So um, we need to figure out uh, which of those is a maximum and which is a minimum. I have a suspicion that it's one, one and one, that one's a max, one's a min. To be able to tell what's a max and a min, use the second derivative, which will be 6x minus 20. So if you put p double prime of 0 0.73 into that function, uh, you get that it is negative. If you put p double prime of 5.94, it is indeed positive. Which means that, uh, remember that this is all about concavity, that this uh, 0.73 is when you have a mountain, because that's concave down, and then uh, concave up is the 5.94. So this, the 7.3 is a max, and the 5.494 is a minimum. So, to maximize profits, They should make, it's 0.73 times 1,000, because this X was always in terms of thousands of fishing poles. So when you do that, I believe this is 730 poles. I forgot to say make. <laughs> to minimize profits, not sure why we would want to do that, but it is true that if you want to make the least profits possible, um, they should make 5.94 times 1,000, so uh, 5,940 pulls. All right, you guys. Good luck with your homework. Hit